Hi there, nice people. Hello, lady and gentlemen. Tonight, we're going to do an inside out review of the brand new Benchmade series of knives, War. Specifically, we're looking at full size Adira and its mini companion, creatively called Mini Adira. I had to search to find out the meaning of the name, and here it is. It's a Hebrew name for a girl, and it means strong, noble, and powerful. There's no objective way to test how noble this knife is, but I can certainly determine whether it's strong and powerful. To me, in a knife, there are three most important things. What kind of edge does it carry? How tough is the blade? And in a case of locking folding knives, how good is the lock? Anything else is background noise to me. Because if I'm going to carry a knife in the pocket every day or several times a week, this better be sharp, tough, and safe. The knife reviewer universe is already a buzz with all kinds of comparison between these two knives and uh, Benchmade Bugout and Benchmade Adamas. This is so obvious that I almost didn't do that. But here they are. Real comparison in the Benchmade lineup is hunting series or hunt series crooked river and mini crooked river and that's the closest i can do to compare it within the bench made lineup these two knives are significantly less expensive than either crooked river or mini crooked river and uh you know what benchman is not actually competing with itself and that's a good news for the company. The real comparison needs to be made between Mini Adira and Spyderco Manix 2 Lite and between Large Adira and Microtech MSI because that is what these two knives are competing against in size, feel, construction quality, and price. So let's remove these beautiful lanyards get our tools out, take them apart and see. Are they in a good health or will they require a prescription from the cutting board? All right, my Hodo drivers made a short work of it. And here is what I wanted to show you. So a couple of things that are not obvious at a first glance. First of all, Benchmade provides a convenient tray for loose hardware inside the handle. See how nicely they fit? Just kidding. The most important thing is they did not switch to the new flat or impingement style Omega spring. These are just regular standard Benchmade Omega springs. For some reason, the one from the large Adira is made out of darker metal and the one on the small one is shinier. If all th other things are equal, I would prefer the polished finish on the spring because for a water series knife, if it's exposed to salt water, even the minor pitting from corrosion will eventually lead to the spring cracking. So polished finish is always better than the matte finish for a spring as it reduces the amount of water that accumulates on the surface. Let's talk about construction next. As you can see, I'm holding the handle and the sub liners from the large one. As you can see, it's very similar to the bug out and it has a very robust backspacer, which also serves as continuation of stiffening. And the biggest complaint about bug out from uh, you know survivalists out there was that it uh, you know the scale was flexing. So what Benchmade did here, they made a continuous stiffening rib here, basically. So uh, I would expect it to be a lot stiffer than the bug out, and because the handle is thicker, the structure of trusses is also deeper. So I would expect. Uh, very little to no flex on either one of these and same mentality here 
What I did notice on this aluminum backspacer, there's this mystery triangle. So that tells me potentially they're sourcing it somewhere uh, at a company who has triangle as a logo. If you know what that company may be, please let me know in the comments. All right, let's talk a blade shape real quick. A saber grind, it goes pretty high. Let me put it next to the MSI. Uh, roughly the same thickness, but the saber grind on the full-size Adira is just a hair wider than a, on, on MSI. So even as it is a big knife, it would still be pretty slicey. A little bit uh, less acute primary grind angle on this guy. Uh, let's put them side by side. So yeah, so it's a little narrower. If it was me, I would extend the primary grind a little higher. So that would be my slicer and this would be my beater right here. All right, so let's talk about the swedge. This is something I don't like. The purpose of the swedge is to create a diamond shape cross section at the tip. And a properly executed swedge would bring these several lines to a point and, and terminate at the tip of the blade. What it does, this ridge right here, creates additional stiffening and it's more efficient. It's making the blade geometry tougher than simply making it thicker and flat. It's akin to the ridge on the top of a construction helmet. It absorbs and distributes the stress from striking while maintaining excellent penetration capability of the blade. This thickening on the Adira will actually detriment the penetration capability. So for the same blade length and thickness, the Adamas will perform better in a extreme situations that life may throw at you. So the swedge here is a purely decorative feature. What else can I point out here that it may not be caught by other reviewers. Oh, this shape right here. My first thought was, why didn't they put Emerson Wave right here? In any situation where you need to deploy the blade quickly, but cannot have an automatic knife, Emerson Wave has been proven to be the fastest deployment method. In case you're not familiar with Emerson Wave, here is Southern Grind Bad Monkey, equipped with the Emerson Wave. This hook on the blade when you deploy it from your pocket it hooks on the edge of the pocket and opens the blade almost automatically by the way this is a massive knife and uh, a deer comes pretty close in uh, blade length maybe a quarter inch uh, shorter so anyway as you can see there's enough metal there to make this cut out and still have uh, your thumb studs for deployment and if my viewers are interested in seeing that done to one of these blades, drop me a comment and I would definitely entertain that idea. Okay, let's do some more talking about the blade. As you can see, it's a media tumbled and then stone washed finish. Finer stone washed finish. Which is very efficient at hiding scratches as you use your blade. It's all magna cut, a big good chunk of it. And it's completely flat and void of features here. And I don't see the usual Benchmade uh, hardness tester mark. So when you're buying a MagnaCut blade, you are paying a little bit extra because even uh, two years after it's been popularized, yeah, supply is still somewhat limited. So manufacturers charge you a little bit premium for the steel. And the promise of this steel is it's well balanced in hardness or edge retention, toughness or ability to resist deformation and cracking, and stainlessness or corrosion resistance. What I've been uh, learning from reading uh, articles by the very creator of the MagnaCut steel, Dr. Laren Thomas, heat treat is paramount to have that balance. And so there's a window somewhere between 62 and 64 HRC, where all these three properties come to fruition and yield a really, really good blade material. Make it harder 
and it will be less corrosion resistant. Make it softer and counterintuitively, it will become less tough and will lose its edge retention properties while remaining very stainless. So my prediction is, Benchmade being a very conservative company, they will be on the low side of the hardness. Good news is I can test this theory. It's as accurate as a most of these standalone testers, if you know what you're doing. And uh, you have to take several measurements with this guy to get an accurate result. And it uses this uh, probe, and inside the probe, there is a cartridge uh, that drops in, and the computer measures drop and return velocities of the cartridge, and from that data calculates the hardness. Right now, it's calibrated within two tenths of um, Rockwell Hardness Scale C or HRC, and the probe plugs in. Here we go, turn it on. So that was from another knife that I measured yesterday for another video that's coming out sometime soon, but uh, that was an interesting knife. So the key to that is to have a lot of metal mass underneath it because blades are relatively thin and then place the blade with its flattest part on this metal block here. And um, and you press, and it's set up to do three repeated tests, and then give me an average. So let me turn the light off so that you can see better. I'm going to start with the mini Adira. Charge the probe and press the button. We got 59.4 in the first strike. Oh, I need to re-strike because I did not shift the probe. It detected that I struck in the same spot. 66.3 on the next strike. And now I shift the probe a little bit. 59.7. The average is 61.8. So right around 62 Rockwell hardness. As I mentioned before, it was actually calibrated two tenths of a point under. Switching to the large Adira blade, 60 60.6, 60.4, average 62.2. I'm taking a little pause here to let you know that everything you see in this video, the knives behind me and on the table, my tools, my measuring devices, everything you see was paid by me out of my own pocket. I started this channel to sort of be a counter measure to the amount of misinformation and hype that's coming out of the traditional knife reviewers channels. Very important is that you subscribe to my channel hit like buttons and share the links to my videos. That's the only way I can maintain the channel. So I appreciate it and don't forget to do it today. I have my microscope out. So we're gonna start with a small Adira. Benchmade is notorious for creating pretty rough sharpened edges. They feel sharp out of the box, but they don't last. And some of my viewers commented that they heard or read or seen videos that Benchmade burns the edges. I don't necessarily think it's the right way to describe what's going on here. What you see here in this area, I'm just using another knife to show you with a tip. These triations, scratch pattern, some people call it, they terminate in like a toothy apex right here you see this little teeth so when you are cutting through a uh, fibrous material each of these serrations catches on fibers and uh, each of these valleys between the teeth can become the origin of a crack or chip so technically 
the edge is not burned, but it's so rough that um, it dulls quickly. Now it's time to check how safe the lock is on this knife. And I do it using this spine whack test. Hit it pretty hard, as you can see, and there's no unlocking. That was the mini, now let's try the large one. Not a problem. Let's take a look at Manix 2 Lightweight. This Spyderco lock is incredibly strong as well. You may think that all crossbar locks offer that level of strength. Uh, unfortunately, Microtech has broken this rule with their Gremlock knife series, including MSI, Amphibian, and Stitch. So if you are familiar with the basic Benchmade box, this is the old style, and about eight years ago they introduced these. You will be surprised by the size of the boxes these two guys came in. I'm going to play off on the water theme and go like... Doom, doom. Doom, doom. Doom, doom. Doom, doom. Doom, doom. It's an impressively sized box, but somehow I am not impressed. Mm. <laughs> it, you could fit a lot of Benchmade boxes into this one box. What in the world were they thinking? And what in the world are we, the consumers, paying for? Let's look inside. A $10 magnetic lock. A finely printed literature, another two bucks. I bet that uh, wiping cloth in the little orange compartment set me back another ten dollars. Look at it. Is it kind of Benchmade's way to say in your face, regular knife user, we're targeting rich posers who will unleash that useless wiping cloth to taunt people with kershaws in their pocket. Is that the idea? The only thing that's going into the wild below here is my hard-earned cash. <laughs> I am eager to find out if it would do a better job at wiping fingerprints of my blade than a, you know, 30 for $10 cloths that Walmart sells. I wish knife companies stopped solving problems that don't actually exist. I have not heard a single knife enthusiast say, hey, I would buy this knife if only they had this cool cloth. And then I'm going to put it right back in the box and somehow figure out to display it. And you should hear the amount of moaning coming from the knife retailers. They don't have counter space to put these gigantic boxes in. It takes space from the other Benchmade knives. Amy, I know Benchmade watches my videos. I got comments from you guys. So if you watch this video, could you please kindly talk to the corporate and tell them that nobody, literally nobody, wants to pay for all this stuff. In retail value, there is at least $30 worth of junk that really, really doesn't need to be there. To me, the funniest part about this is that it was absolutely unnecessary. I took uh, these knives uh, to work. There is, um, you know, I'm an engineer, but the office I work uh, in is full of, uh, how do I put it? People who have spent their entire careers using tough grade gear. So they know knives, they know all about what gear should or shouldn't be. And I showed them these two knives because I carried them in the pocket today, both of them to work. And, um, you know, they were impressed. Every single person I showed it to were impressed either by how light it is versus how big or how ergonomic. Uh, it generated a little bit ripple of excitement in the office. So honestly, I don't think wasting your, you know, corporate mind juice on these boxes was absolutely necessary. And... Um, 
you know, I'm not just ranting, right? I, I am a big fan of Benchmade as a brand. I collect them. Um, I probably have the entire current catalog right here in the, those cases with a mix with other knives sometimes, sometimes by themselves. But um, the point I'm trying to make is uh, when I critique or criticize the company, I do it from a place of uh, support and love, you know. Um, I have experienced uh, your customer service. I've experienced your life sharp service. I have firsthand experience in uh, uh, warranty repairs with Benjamin, and all of them were absolutely positive. Another thing, uh, a lot of people complain about the price, but did you know that if you are military, current, uh, active duty, or uh, retired, uh, first first responder, you know, and if you can prove that identity using sites like uh, ID.me, just call Benchmade. They will give you 30% of any current production, non-limited edition, non-gold class, but any current production knife, they will give you 30% off. So this 250 full-size Adira will set you back 175 bucks, which is spot on what MSI would cost you, right? Uh, and a small Adira will set you back $150 based on MSRP and 30% off. So please, if you like Benchmades, use this right for a discount that you earn by serving our country and making it possible for the rest of us to even have a hobby like this or a secure house or a secure job. You know, thank you guys. And Benjamin knows how to thank you too. So don't discount that. So by the way, I asked that question from a couple of uh, online retailers and Blade HQ, while they don't advertise it, they still honor these discounts on Benjamin. And uh, unfortunately, Knife Center doesn't. So if Knife Center is watching, I think you should introduce that because where are you located, Northern Virginia, um, <clears throat> the wealth of this area is based on our um, housing, uh, a lot of military installations here. So it'd be a good way for you to pay back to those who protect uh, your right to sell knives.